Okay, so we are going for the last presentation of this afternoon. It's uh, Jacob Alvi, who will talk about kinetic approximation for the of modern and systems. Thank you for the introduction, thank you for the, for the kind invitation to Navarra. And uh, today I will speak about some kinetic model in control of uh, self organized systems. And so actually, I have to thank Giovanni about the, the talk since he uh, introduced a lot of the topic I will speak about. And uh, this is a joint work with uh, Renzo Parisky, with Matteo Zanelli, La Giacomo Di Marco, and the other collaborator in Munich. So, here are a brief overview of the talk. I will start, I will skip part of the introduction since uh, it's already been uh, presented by Giovanni. Then I will go and I will speak mainly about control problem for uh, collective motion. Okay? And <coughs> in particular, I will focus on microscopic aspect first, and then I will go and try to solve the mean fit approximation of uh, the multi agency when the number of particles is really large. Uh, so the main part of the talk will be uh, an application. We, we did a uh, work with uh, some other collaborators in Munich and in Rome and in Linz. <coughs> and it will be related to an evacuation problem. So how would we evacuate a crowd of people out of our uh, room? And finally some perspective uh, on the microscopic limits. Okay, so what is, uh, first of all, a self-organized system? As Giovanni told us, is a system where particle agents are interacting with each other, and out of the interaction between the particles, you have some global uh, order which emerges out of uh, this kind of thing. There is a nice quote by Aristotle, I like to, to cite, which says us that the whole is greater than the part of the sum, uh, is greater than the and the sum of the parts, which means that out of the sum of this interaction, what emerges is greater than actually what you can predict with this interaction. Here we have some example we have already seen this nice picture in the previous book. <coughs> so uh, let me just mention that from the mathematical point of view, we have several ways to describe this kind of uh, behaviors. We have Microsoft models, but when the number of particles is really large, it's uh, uh, better to rely on some approximation in, at the kinetic level or at the microscopic one. <coughs> and still, here we have a huge literature on this kind of uh, uh, models. So <coughs> here is a best, very basic modeling that is used to, to model the interaction with the particle. And it's uh, due to some kind of computer scientists, which are these guys here. <coughs> it's a pretty old model. Which, had, which tells us uh, according to which region the particle are uh, exposed in the space, the kind of interaction they have. So <coughs> if they are close to each other, they have some repulsion. If they are far away from each other, they have some kind of attraction. If they are in this comfort zone, they have an alignment uh, direction with respect to the particle that are inside that area. So here we have uh, <coughs> the result of this uh, com uh, combination of forces. So we see that the particles start to attract and repulse each other. And out of this uh, interaction, we have the emergence of uh, some kind of view we see immediately. The particles start to rotate in some direction. And finally, we have the emergence of a, of a mean formation. Okay. So this is the kind of uh, phenomenon we are interested in. So <coughs> a very basic model that Giovanni already presented me the present answer is <coughs> the Cooper's main model. So it's an alignment model, which means that it's, okay, it's a second order model. And the acceleration of the, the particle uh, is computed at each time step in this way. So we have the, the, the velocity of the particle i, our agent i, uh, relax to our the particle, the velocity of the particle j. Okay? So in this kind of interaction is weighted by this function h. So this function h is function of the space, so the, the distance between the particles. And usually one of the uh, choice that is done is the following, so it's uh, one over the uh, distance plus one for boy singularity the origin <coughs> of the of the particle. Power sum this point gamma. Which is important in order to understand the uh, 
the, the, the behavior of this system in the long run. So when gamma is less or equal than one half, we have the part that will align no matter what is the initial condition of the system. But if gamma is larger than one half, then we cannot have the, 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 the global consensus, the global alignment of the particles. It depends on the initial condition of the problem. So here, again, show simulation, we see on the left the, the particle which runs from our random initial data, and on the left the, the gamma is chosen uh, greater than one half, and in the, on the right we have the particles that are aligned with uh, the exponent 0. Point. Uh, 25, so it's less than one half, and so we see that we have global consensus, so we don't have consensus on the other side. So, <coughs> the question now is since it's uh, well studied the analysis and the, and the, the mathematical uh, point of view of this model from the microscopic point of view, is uh, understanding what kind of optimal control problem we can set up for this kind of model. When we want to enforce, for example, in the previous case, the alignment. So in the case we don't have alignment from the initial data, how we can prescribe an optimal control problem in order to improve the emergence of, the, of this kind of uh, collective behavior. <coughs> so there are several issues emerging at this point. So first of all, uh, when the number of particles is really large, so the standard control problem rely on the solution of a country argument maximum principle or dynamic programming. And the number of particles is really large, we are affected by the first dimension argument. So <coughs> this problem is unsolvable. Okay. So uh, what we can do, the first thing to do is to do an approximation using some kind of mean field limit or mean field description of the dynamic. And this is strongly related to the work of uh, Lars Lilion, <coughs> one one of that kind of well, these guys who uh, developed this theory of uh, uh, differential game or mean field uh, games. So, I'm entering this kind of uh, offset. So, the first step to understand what I'm doing <coughs> is to look at the control, the Peterson model, and just add a term here, UI, which represents the solution of an optimal control problem. Okay? So there are different ways to improve the, the, the emergence of the alignment in the Smith model. For example, we can prescribe, according to some computation, a feedback control in order to improve the, the, the solution of this system to convert to a to one direction. Or we can actually solve the problem, the optimal control problem, where U is the solution of some function, where we see that we want to steer all the velocity of the particle to add one desired velocity, okay? where we put some penalization on the control term. Okay? And then another approach which has been studied by the group of Munich, especially for Nazir Piccoli, Caponino, Bella, is what we can do in order to stabilize the system uh, using uh, a finite amount of resources. So if I want to use, let's say, that we want to say that the normal view is less or equal than M. What is the minimal, uh, what is the best strategy in order to steer the consensus toward the, uh, toward the desired velocity? <coughs> what is the, the kind of control that uh, we can have in this case? So, here's some examples. So, this is the case so in which the particle from the very beginning that don't align. In the meanwhile, we see that the global control is some kind of control which acts on all the particles. So if I go back one slide, you see, I imagine that U here is uh, greater than zero for each part. Okay? So in this case, we see that if I apply, we see the control acting with this red color. We see that the, the, the control is acting on all the parts, the particles are steered toward this direction. Okay? So it's a kind of force, which is the solution of the control problem, we steer my particle towards some direction. On the other side, <coughs> what means uh, sparse control is when I want to use the control just a one or few particles in the system in order to steer the consensus. So I will show you just a simulation. So what happened? You see that the part, the, the, it's very fast, sorry for that. But what happens is that at the beginning, the control moves 
with the particles, deciding which one has to pick up in order to study the transactions. Okay. And this is is been proven by Informatia, which is uh, which are able always to find this kind of control in order to study the system. The solution is essentially to to pick up which one is the farthest one from the average velocity. Okay. And put all the resources that we have on that part. Okay. In order to study the solution. So. Now the question is, uh, what happens when go n goes to infinity? So, <coughs> it has been proven for this kind of problems, rigorously, that we can, let's say, the, the sequence of minimize of the final control problem for the particle converge to the solution of the, uh, the, this kind of problem in the, uh, this infinitesimal, uh, infinite, time, uh, infinite control problem um, for, uh, the, let's say, the, the density of the particle. So the problem is that we want to solve numerically now this kind of problem. Okay? So we want to solve this kind of problem numerically and what we can do. So the problem is that from uh, the analysis we see that if we don't impose enough regularity on the realization of the control, <coughs> we, we cannot say anything on the, say on, the, the, on the solution of this problem. The solution cannot exist. So uh, a way to avoid this problem is to stay on the finite uh, dimensional continuum of total product for the particle and steer the infinite uh, uh, dimensional uh, um, problem of uh, the, the density of particle <coughs> in order to, to, uh, to solve the optimal control problem for the finite, uh, for the finite dimensional. So what I mean is that essentially I want to split the particles in two densities. One is uh, say the continuous density, the other one is the, a particle density. Okay? So it's what I, I'm going to do is essentially to control a smaller part of the density which stays in the and uh, I will uh, um, say with this small amount of particle I will control the, 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 the continuous density of the particle. So this is what I'm going to do. In order to do, the, to do that, uh, let me skip this one, it's not important, I will focus on a particular problem. So the problem I will focus on is uh, an evaporation problem. So <coughs> the problem is the following, I have a, a bunch of particles of agents inside a room, inside a, a space, and <coughs> this particle doesn't know the environment they are in. And they want to find the exit. So the, there is a, let's say, uh, we call the part that doesn't know the environment, the followers, and these followers want to find the exit, but they don't know where the, the exit is. On the other hand, there is a part of the party, which I would call leader, which knows know where the exit is. And they want to influence the followers in order to steer all the particles outside of the exit. So <coughs> this is the setting, and uh, uh, they say that uh, uh, the, uh, what I want to do next is to, um, to, to, to say, okay, I want to uh, control the, 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 the whole crowd just using these small leaders, these few leaders inside the crowd, and this leader, moreover, are invisible. So what happens is that this leader interacts in the same way uh, with the other one. So they are not recognizable by the by the by the follower as leaders. Okay? So it's a kind of a soft control school. So the model guidelines are the following. So there are two regions. There is this one region where the leader, the followers, uh, cannot see the exit. As soon as they enter in some kind of area here, they see the exit. So they have a sharp motion toward the exit. They don't care about the other interaction. So the guidelines for the for the followers are the following. So inside them, so there is always a repulsion force. So if I have if I am close to another party, another agent, I get repelled by the, the, the agent that wants to stay too close to that. Then there is a characteristic speed which is essentially in the in the crowd is around one meter per second. Uh, <coughs> and then uh, I split the behavior in the two areas. So if the exit is not visible, I have two main dynamics. 
One is uh, a topological alignment, as Giovanni told us before. Essentially, we are not interacting with all the particles in the, in the system. If we look back to the model of Crestail, we see that the interaction is made on all the particles here. Even if we have this function H, which is essentially uh, put down interaction with the long distance uh, particle. But what I will do, I will use a topological alignment, which means that I will have a fixed amount of particle I will interact with at every time. So it's a fixed number of particles, which say 10 in this case, which I will interact with. Okay? So this is fixed. <coughs> and moreover, what we do if we don't know the environment and we want to find the exit, we just start to explore randomly some direction. So at the beginning I will just pick one direction, we go straight forward in that direction, and at some point I will look at the people around me and we start, I will decide which direction to take according to the, what the other people around me they are doing. Okay. <coughs> and as I said, if the, if the exit is visible, we go directly to the exit. On the other hand, the leader, as I said, I want to control the leader. So, the uh, leader will have, uh, of course, the repulsion, there are agents, so there are people interacting in the same way, but they, they will have a, a fixed strategy. Okay? And this fixed strategy is given by an offline optimization procedure. <coughs> and of course, what I suppose that the number of leaders will really be uh, small with respect to the number of, fol uh, of followers. And uh, another different risk is that the leaders will uh, be modeled as a first order model. Instead for the followers, I will have a second order model. That's because I'm using uh, the alignment of the velocity for the followers, but for the leaders, I want to stay on the first order model. Because first order models are more reliable for uh, crowd dynamics since they, don't have, they, they, they put less inertia in the, the, the in the, in the simulation, the, the dynamic. <coughs> and then if you think about the movement of the crowds, the movement of the crowds are, they have less energy. You move in a sharp way. Okay. You can change the right direction faster than uh, birds in the air. Okay. So, here is uh, our model. So the first two equations are the equation for the, for the leaders, uh, for the followers, sorry. And this, the, the last one, the third one, is the one for the for the leaders. So you see here, A represents the, essentially the characteristic velocity given by all the term I explained you. So just to give some notation, theta represents a characteristic function which tells us if we are inside or outside this visibility area. Okay. So if we are outside of the visibility area of the exit, uh, we have one minus. This is uh, one essentially. <coughs> this is, is, uh, uh, is one just inside of the visibility area. And we see that if we are outside the visibility area, we have a relaxation to our uh, uh, realization of a uh, ground of motion. So zeta is distributed as a Gaussian with uh, uh, average zero and sigma squared as a variance. <coughs> and then here, uh, we have always the relaxation to our characteristic speed, which is given by alpha. And here is the relaxation towards the, uh, the, the position of the action, x, which is represented by xt. So <coughs> then the interaction between the body is created in the interaction between the followers, in the interaction between the leaders. But let me stress out that the, the type of interaction that there will be is the same. So h is the same. So the, the leader are not recognized okay. Secondly, we have the interaction with uh, uh, of the leader, which takes an account of the repulsion between the, the leaders uh, and the followers and the followers and uh, uh, sorry, the leader and the leader, plus UK, which is the solution of an optimization process. Okay. And H is given by again this repulsion term between the particles. And this term, which is essentially, you see, the alignment of the velocity to R, the velocity of the other end. Okay. And this velocity is times this characteristic ball, which is given by this uh, topological interaction. Okay. So the model is pretty complicated, but 
<coughs> what happens is that essentially I'm interacting just with a fixed number of particles at every time. Okay? As a follow And as a leader, I'm moving with respect to this image. So, a simulation more than a thousand words. So, here's the setting I will deal with. So, this is the visibility area of the exit. I don't want to take care about the boundary condition. So, the, the particles are just going directly toward the exit if they are inside the visibility area. The outside will move accordingly to the, say, the noise term here and the uh, characteristic speed and interaction with the other part. So alignment and requirement. So what happened here? Yeah. So this is a joint work with uh, Juliano Cristiani from uh, CNR and Dante Calizer from uh, Ican Linz and Matteo Bontini from Munich. And uh, this simulation are done by Juliano Cristiani with some kind of visualization. So essentially it's the same simulation just visualized in this nice way. So you see that the shielded area is the visibility area. And <coughs> so at the beginning, the, bar, the, the agent will start to move around, look around because of the random uh, term. But at some point, the some uh, clusters start to emerge. So the particle breaks down the initial data. So some, uh, <coughs> some of them that will go in this direction, or in the other direction. And the particles that stay inside the axis that go to our axis. Okay? So, if I go back again, you see that the particle is the, the agent inside, they're going just directly to the exit, and they bring some of the particle outside of the visibility area to our EX. This is because of the topological line. And also, <coughs> at the beginning, the, cluster, the clusterization that we see here of the groups is, uh, is due to the, uh, uh, because of the, of the topological line. So the, the topological alignment somehow wins the, the um, the, the noise of the interaction and uh, the same uh, out of the initial data the, because of the initial distribution of the data you see that the, some particular direction emerge okay. <coughs> so, so the first thing is how we can introduce this strategy in order to improve the location of the, of the crowd so our first down strategy saying, okay, we have this setting, let's put some leader inside the, say, the, 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 the follower dynamic, and we put the leader in this position, okay? So at the end of the crowd. And then the first down strategy is like a prescribed control, a prescribed strategy, we say, okay, let's say to the leader, go directly to the exit, no matter what. You don't care what the agents and the other agents are doing, if you just go to the exit somehow, you will uh, steer, you, you will steer some agents to arguments. So, again, the simulation for this setting. So, you see, they either are the red one, but they are just interacting the same way with the other, so they are not recognized as leader. And you see that out of this simple strategy, they are able to bring all the people to arguments. Okay? But you see that at the same time, uh, as soon as they bring everybody to the exit, there is this effect. So they will take for, for the crowd to evaporate, take some time since there is this dropping effect because of the repulsion. Okay. So here you see on the on the right, you see the occupancy of the visibility here, which essentially represents the clogging effect. You see that there is a pipe here which essentially say, okay, here we have a lot of people, we are not able to go out easily. Okay? And here when you have a plateau means that essentially the people are stopped, the body is going out. <coughs> so what that means, we use some uh, uh, optimal control. So the, the, the problem is, uh, uh, is uh, highly computationally expensive, <coughs> but we can use some kind of approximation of the optimal control. Problem. So it's called MPC, modulating control. So I take the this functional, and they want to minimize this functional <coughs> with these strategies. So the functional says essentially that they want to bring the people, the agents, to our exit. And uh, I want the, the Y is the, the variable for the leader. The, the variable for the leader doesn't want to stay too far away from the agents, the followers, because if I go away from the, from the followers, I cannot interact with them. Okay? At the same time, I want to penalize the 
from doing this way. Okay? But this technique, which essentially finds a uh, uh, suboptimal control of the optimal of the problem, is essentially uh, a minimization on a uh, finite uh, um, horizon. So I'm uh, predicting the, the dynamic just to the same 10 time step by it. And then I use the solution I find to uh, let this, uh, this system evolve for one time step. Okay? <coughs> so the, what that means is that using some prediction step in this way, we don't improve actually the situation. So there is no improvement. So we, okay, if we use six time step by it, there's some improvement of the, of the total location, but there is no actual improvement. So now the point is to use another technique in order to solve the global uh, uh, optimal control problem. So we change function and we want to minimize. The minimization of the function is the following. So we want to minimize which is the number of followers outside of the exit at time. Okay? <coughs> and the way we uh, minimize this function is using a modified Thomas search, which means that from a guest strategy is exactly the dumb strategy I showed you before, we <coughs> made the following assumption. We say, let's take the leader having trajectory which are piecewise constant in time. So it means that they have a sharp motion toward one direction, but at some point they are free to choose another direction. But for some time they fix that direction. Okay? This is a way to reduce the, the computational cost. <coughs> and then, starting from the initial guess, I start to uh, um, solve the, the optimal control problem. So I let the system evolve one time, find uh, perturbing the, the initial strategy, and see if this better with respect to the previous one, and then do this updating procedure for some time. And the, <coughs> the way we, we implement this modified compass search is pretty fast and pretty uh, efficient. This allows us to solve this optimal control problem in, in the same uh, one hour. So, what we see now is the solution of this optimization procedure. So, again, at the same initial setting, you have, what we will, you will see is that the leader at the beginning will start to take some different trajectory in order to deceive the, the, the followers toward the, the exit. So, there is some of the leader will go directly to the exit, some other will go some other direction. And that's because the, the optimization procedure is trying to avoid the clogging effect we saw before. So, here is a simulation. So we didn't also prescribe to the leader to go to the exit, they will just go around the, the space. So you see that this guy is going this way, so he's bringing some of the people in one direction, but in this way they are able, they are able to ease out the, the people uh, from the exit. And then the, there is no strategy for it. But it's easy to impose also to the leader to go to the leader. There is no actual improvement. Okay. So and we see that here the occupancy the visibility area has, has much more improved. There is no pipe here. Okay. So now the question is uh, if I want to solve this problem when the leader are model as a um, uh, a kinetic equation. Yeah, so I imagine that leader, the leader, the crowd, is, pre is described by a, a density function. Okay. So the, the, the approach that we use in order to, to, to solve the, the problem is the one Giovanni explained, the uh, referred before, is based on the description with uh, uh, binary interaction of uh, the particles, it's based on Boltzmann equation. <coughs> and out of the Let's say this uh, type of approximation, this kinetic approximation, I will uh, uh, derive uh, uh, an algorithm which is uh, pretty fast in order to solve the evolution of, uh, of the kinetic density. <coughs> and this approach is related to uh, of, uh, development of algorithm for plasma physics. So here's the assumption I'm doing. So the assumption I'm doing is that the density of the leader is uh, given by G, but which is actually just an empirical density. So the leader stays microscopic. Okay? And the followers, the rest of the follower is F. Okay? So F counts the number of particles, uh, the position of particles at time T, position X, plus T. <coughs> Moreover, I want to keep 
the uh, proportion between leader and followers. So we can see the leader essentially as a, a concentrated mass uh, direct mass. Okay? So the, the, the density of the follower will be an F exactly, and the, uh, the density of the, the leader will be an F. <coughs> and here, how I account the change of the, say, in the time of the, of the density, I will take this binary interaction for the, lead, for the followers. So I will have a binary interaction between the followers, a binary interaction with the followers team. So the binary interaction between followers and followers is essentially the one as you saw before the microscopic model. So here you have the, the term given by the noise here inside the outside the visibility area plus S X V which represents the deterministic part of the characteristic velocity. <coughs> and here the interaction is weighted by the factor rho f and is given by the essentially the alignment, the repulsion of uh, the other one. And moreover, it starts out that the force of this interaction is weighted by eta f, which is the strength of the interaction. At the same time, they, I count the, the exchange of information with the leaders in, this, in the same way. So, moreover, also the, the noise I'm putting as a different distribution since I want to, uh, say, take a scaling that we show you in the next slide, which allows me to say that the the, the, the kinetic description, description I'm giving here is actually the same, uh, say the, 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 the proper description of the microscopic model as soon as uh, I take an empirical distribution of uh, the forms. So, so now I want to uh, describe this exchange of information through a Boltzmann like equation. So, here we have the Boltzmann equation where the collision on the term are given by these two operators, <laughs> which are actually different, sorry for the typo, and they have two different uh, frequencies of interaction. Okay? So, lambda f and lambda f. Plus, the system is coupled, of course, with this equation is coupled with the evolution of the, the, the motion of the leaves. Okay? Here, the, we see the, how we describe the, the exchange of information, and it's given by <coughs> the, the following collision operator. We have the gain part of the, of the particle, uh, and here we have the loss part. Okay? So the gain part, uh, the notation is the following, so we have V star and, uh, and V star star, okay, here is another type, sorry, uh, is the pre-interaction velocity, and here I am counting the, 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 the velocity that are going to the position X. And here I am counting the, the, the density of particles that I am losing in position X. <laughs> and JFF and JFL are the, uh, say the Jacobian, the inverse of the Jacobian of the binary interaction. Okay. So this is a model which is, which is due to Bothner in 62 and is uh, used also by, it's been used by Toscani in order to describe the, the flopping behavior and collective So now we have a theorem, so let's fix the control, the type of strategy we have on the, on the leader, and we use the following scale. So we say the interaction, the interaction with the particle scale with the epsilon, and the frequency interaction scale with one of the epsilon. Okay? With some other correct input. And also the, 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 the variance of the noise scale with one over epsilon. In this way, so I say that the strength of the interaction is low, is low and the, the frequency interaction is high. So in this way, when epsilon goes to zero, we converge, say this system converge pointwise to the following one, okay? which is essentially a focke plan type of equation. So we see that we have a, a, a linear friction term here plus the diffusion term, which is given by the, the noise at the beginning in the microscope. So if I substitute here an empirical density of particle, I exactly retrieve the, 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 the microscopic system I showed you at the beginning. <coughs> so here's the idea of the proof. How much time do I have? One minute. One minute. One minute. <laughs> so we skip the, the idea, but essentially it's just a little expansion. Um, it's a, uh, um, it's called also basic collision limit. 
And here's the idea of the numerical scheme I'm using. So I'm splitting the, the dynamic in transport and collision. And the collision is solved according to a Monte Carlo method. And well, essentially I reconstruct the, the density of the particle using an S particles. And this is a way to solve it. So it's an amplified algorithm. So essentially I'm using a forward, forward Euler uh, uh, method. And essentially I'm counting the exchange of, uh, of uh, information from this collision and this one at each time step. But just through linear interaction. So essentially the cost of this algorithm is linear. <coughs> and we can see it here. Essentially there is a linear cost of this set of algorithms which increases as soon as I count more interaction between the particles each time step. And here we have the, the convergence of the method which goes essentially with one of the square roots of the number of particles I'm using to reconstruct the, the system. This is essentially a Monte Carlo. So here just to conclude we see, okay, we see the plot of this law, so, uh, we see that in the case of the uh, mesoscopic uh, uh, evolution, we see here the, the density evolving, and here we see the occupancy of the visibility area and the percentage of the uh, density that is evacuated from the from the from the from the from the, from the So this is the case where we have no strategy, and here. We have the case in which we use the dump strategy. So we see that the blue line is the sorry for a moment. So the blue line gives us the, the the occupancy of the visibility area. And the green line gives us tell us essentially how much density is evacuated by the uh, outside of the axis. So we see that essentially the density was in the previous one is exploring all the domain. Okay, because of the diffusion tool. And here we see that the particles are able to essentially bring some of the, the leader are able to bring some of the density to our DX. So again, since the, 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 the kind of algorithm that we developed is pretty fast, we are able to again do the global control problem <coughs> for the mean field equation for the followers and what we find is the following solution for this kind of initial data. And you see that again the leader are uh, breaking the density, the symmetry of the density in the exit in order to ease out the, the, the evacuation of the, of the density of the And here you see that essentially the, the, the focus of the visibility area is mooted out with respect to the previous one. So I think I so here is just some uh, next steps. So going to microscopic limit, we can uh, do some kind of uh, approximation given by this uh, one answer. So essentially, we want to find a closure of, uh, of our moments, just assuming that the particle at each position x are aligned with respect to this field. And the temperature is zero. The evaporation is actually unintelligible. So what we have is this pressureless, this is for example for Google's main model, this is pressureless Euler plus some uh, diffusion given by the flow. <laughs> and so the idea is uh, how we can now uh, find some uh, optimal control, uh, uh, how we can prescribe some optimal control problem for this kind of uh, uh, system, and how it related the, to the previous one, say the kinetic one and the magnetic one. Here, some point one with Paresti, uh, Artisanella, and also, <coughs> especially for the previous slide, is an ongoing project with the Japanese market as possible. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. I have one okay. question about the fact that you have only one exit in all the. <coughs> what about if you have more exits than one? I mean, it seems to me that. You won't have any solution to your control problem anymore, right? Okay. Or it will not be unique somehow. Yeah. Is it true? I mean, I don't know why it's something with more than just two exits. Yeah, yeah, you mean two exits? Two exits, exit. and it may, you may think that we split randomly or. Yeah, yeah, we, of course we don't have any existence in theory. 
No, 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 I'm talking about just the numeric. I mean, how do you observe? I mean, yeah, no, we didn't try with multiple axes. We didn't try. This is a... We, we just tried with different positions of the meters. But we found different uh, solutions. Do, do you think that there would be some issues with having two axes? Mm, I don't think so. No, I mean... Mm, I would say that uh, essentially we, we see the... Uh, uh, probably what happened is that if you have a perfect symmetric data, you should have symmetric. Yeah, you should have symmetric uh, solution. Yeah, this. Is but I, I, I think it's uh, easily implementable. The only remark about the base is about two x because it, we perform some simulation by using the algorithm in order to understand the work because. I about this kind of uh, because uh, also the leader is the if I want to understood the the interaction is for is the uh, fire fire points, okay? I think that uh, for example if you have a uh, evacuation, what happens you want to exit if uh, people are close to an exit to choose this kind of exit, what happens is the arching. So the, the axis blocked and our axis far is in some sense free. So one, uh, I think one, uh, one uh, role of the, of the leader could be to, to drive them. Drive to or, so I think what uh, is necessary to introduce is some kind of uh, uh, look at some kind of the global uh, behavior of the, of the people. Okay, leader cannot, but some other can say, okay, you can go to uh, to other exit. I, I think uh, it's possible to introduce some kind of External field. External field means uh, a sound means something like that. In order to, to permit to, to a leader to have to, to, to reach some uh, some goal. Yeah, no, we never end up with a solution where the essentially the lens was stu uh, stacked up in uh, some configuration we were not able to to evaluate. We, we always had the, the solution of the outcome. But that's because really of the kind of setting we are using. Because uh, the, the particles are, some of them are already inside the exit, so they, they act like a uh, not informed uh, leader. So they are already steering some of the particles toward the exit. If you bring all the particles inside, the, I can show you the next slide. So, for example, if, if you don't have any leader, they just go around, they split up. And if you put uh, the leader inside the, the particles uh, system of the followers, they are able to, to enforce the consensus with this kind of model. But as soon as you switch off the leaders, you have the particles start to split up again. So it's really unstable as a system. So also of course depends on the kind of parameter you want to do. But <coughs> yeah. Yeah, there's another question. Your model is leader to idea of the time, actually, because you have that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have leader which runs every one outside and see the the and then they have the creator of the model which follows the leader. So is it attempting to, to, to do so? I mean, you plan to compare with the true heads of it. Or is it really intended to do? So we, we actually did a real experiment with people, yeah. with students. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was last year in September uh, with the first year uh, students of uh, mathematics in Rome. Yeah, yeah it was like uh, ants. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the leaders? <laughs> so they went. It's hard to pass to continue. Yeah, it's far away. It was 50 50 the number of, uh, of uh, agents. And we was, there was a, the first setting without any leader. So the, the people were in this kind of room, they, were, they had to go out and find some kind of office okay, in, uh, inside the, the building. So I, I don't know if you've ever been to, to Rome, but the, the, the Aldo Moro building is pretty, uh, say, it's circular and you get lost pretty easily. Okay, if, you, if this is the first time you, you go there, that was the, the first year my, uh, students, the first day. Okay, okay. So uh, nobody know, know about the, the position of the, the office. So, the first uh, uh, test was this uh, this people going out and trying to find this office, 
And uh, the second test was the same, okay, the other, other students, so we split the class in two parts, 50-50. The second part had some informant agents inside, with, which were not from mathematics, they were kind of, uh, so Emiliano and his wife is a school teacher, so yeah, I took some of their students inside the, the class, yeah, it was kind of a, <laughs> a joke, but essentially they, they were able to, to improve the, the the crowd to reach the target point in the, the, in the, in the build. So it's something that uh, you can observe, observe also in, in people, not just in. Uh, oh, yeah, so that's my question. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, the, the model is uh, pretty complicated, we say, and very yeah. far meter, but it's pretty realistic in the kind of simulation we have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so So the, there is a um, important relation between the, the noise and the alignment. So uh, as soon as the alignment is stronger of the noise, so essentially you can control the alignment, the, the, the noise with the alignment, then uh, the, the rest of the parameters are not that as soon as far as we understand. Okay. Well, and experience, for example, in fire evacuation procedures in which uh, it probably are known in this which uh, people must have started with uh, uh, positioning exits, uh, strategic places, and more than one exit. Do you have the empirical information that you can actually use for the models? So, as cited by Giovanni, there is this guy, Dirk Helping, studying about this model, about this kind of problems. In our case, uh, I think it's really difficult to, to model uh, the, the fire case, the fire operation, because also the kind of interaction changed completely according to the emotional state of the, of the, of the people of the agent. So I don't think this model is reliable for kind of situation. You have to change somehow the, the kind of interaction to the change in. Having empirical data with the panic, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know how to measure panic. Really. So that's one point. Sorry, if I may comment on that, because I have true experience on that, mm -hmm. made by my wife who is a teacher, and so they had the training from the school to evacuate the school. So they have a plan. They are the leaders, the teachers. So they have a plan what to follow according to firemen. And, and they can do that, you know, in let's say five minutes or six minutes, mm -hmm. uh, under no stress. Under stress, not that it's increased, but the fact that they are making mistakes, the leaders, make that as instance they are not checking, they did not check properly uh, all the students because one of the firemen made the experiment of taking one of the students, the student, the, the pupil with, with him, and they, if they measure how much time it took for the teacher to realize that one of the students were missing. Okay. And it takes something like six, five minutes, five to six minutes, where it should be instantaneously recall, I mean, mm -hmm. reduced from, from the situation. So under stress, it really does change everything. According to the final. Yeah, moreover, if I can add this, also the point that uh, as soon as you know that you are in an experiment, yeah. the behavior changes completely. So, in this case, the test we did, we tried to avoid that, put in some kind of competition. So, they didn't know that it was an experiment uh, looking for them to reach, essentially, to, to have some kind of uh, uh, more reliable uh, model. But it was some kind of just combination. You know, you have to go to that point, you will win something. So, so in this way, we avoid this uh, essentially noise by the, the fact that they were informed that it was an experiment. So, yeah, but I, I don't, didn't try to, to find for uh, literature about this. Okay, it's probably time to evacuate. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for.